Do you ever just stop and think about the icons of cinema? I mean, characters specifically. Those definitive roles that are inextricably linked with their performer. Think Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, Arnold Schwarzenegger as the T-800, and Stellan Skarsgård as, well, this guy. God damn. Whatever the case, the point is that these guys became so synonymous with their character that it becomes very difficult to think of anyone but them in the role. Weirder to think about, though, is the fact that there are a whole host of iconic parts out there that originally went to someone else before fate, luck, financiers, and studio schedules intervened. I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture, and here are 10 iconic roles almost played by totally different actors. Number 10. Iron Man, Sam Rockwell. I think it would be fair to say that Sam Rockwell is one of the strongest working actors we have currently. Charming with a flair for humor and drama, Rockwell has delivered a bevy of acclaimed performances since breaking out in the 1990s, eventually winning an Oscar for his role in Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri in 2017. Given his work spans across all kinds of genres, it's no surprise that his paths eventually crossed with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Rockwell portrayed Justin Hammer in the first Iron Man sequel, Iron Man 2, a rival arms manufacturer to Tony Stark whose janky inventions and jealousy lead him to strike a deal with the vengeful but bird-fond Whiplash, played by Mickey Rourke. Interestingly enough, though, before Robert Downey Jr. was cast in the role of Tony Stark for Jon Favreau's first Iron Man movie, Rockwell himself was in strong consideration due to studio hesitation of working with RDJ, who was then only beginning his Hollywood comeback with movies like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and The Shaggy Dog. Rockwell had been sounded out for the part during this period of studio reticence, with Danny Jr. still Favreau's preferred option. As Rockwell discussed in a breakdown of his roles with GQ, love those videos by the way, GQ folks, you're doing the Lord's work, Favreau had called the actor about the part, but discussions fizzled out soon afterward, with RDJ eventually being confirmed in the role, and therefore changing the course of movie history as we know it. As Oppenheimer director Christopher Nolan said, it was, quote, one of the most consequential casting decisions in the history of the movie business. Rockwell would have been great, but it's hard to think of anyone but Downey as Marvel's genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Number 9. Wolverine do Grey Scott. Like it or loathe it, Wolverine has been the standard bearer for the X-Men on screen for nearly two and a half decades now. Acting is the element that the franchise has continually wrapped itself around like Omega Red's tendrils, much like the aforementioned Iron Man and the MCU. A big part of the why here is Hugh Jackman's iconic performance, which expertly captured both the animalistic nature and deep sensitivities of the character and also being charismatic as hell in the process. But before 20th Century Fox landed on Jackman for the part, turning the mild-mannered Aussie sweetheart into an all-muscle action star for the ages, they originally had Scottish actor Do Grey Scott, of TV's crime and Mission Impossible 2 fame, lined up for the role. It's easy to see why as well, with Scott having the right physical presence and the ability to turn on the rage like a faucet. While X-Men had been delayed to allow time for Scott to finish up as the villain on John Woo's still underrated Mission Impossible sequel, delays, a longer shoot, and various other issues on that production meant that he was booted from the role of Wolverine. What could have been his big break into the mainstream then became Jackman's. Nuff said. Number 8. Bill Harford, Steve Martin. Steve Martin and Stanley Kubrick probably aren't what you'd think of as a match made in heaven, but on contraire, this partnership could have been an all-timer. You see, years before Kubrick started filming his late career Marvel Eyes Wide Shut, which featured iconic turns from co-leads Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, the director had strongly considered Martin for the role of Bill Harford. This was back in the 1980s when the film's production was still in its relative infancy, but it's not hard to see how Martin could have navigated the horned up, psychosexual, and sometimes comedic dynamics of what became Kubrick's final movie. While a comedy icon, obviously, Martin wasn't without his dramatic chops either, having delivered compelling performances in 1981's Pennies from Heaven and The Spanish Prisoner. His versatility, comedic sensibilities, and yes, sex appeal could have made him the perfect co-lead for Eyes Wide Shut. 
As told in Nick Decemlian's book, Wild and Crazy Guys, which dives into the rise and impact of 80s comedy legends like Martin, the jerk actor was invited to meet with Kubrick in England when they discussed the role. Nothing came of it, ultimately, and for the record, Cruz does a fantastic job as Harford in the finished film. But still, fascinating to consider all the same. Number 7. Patrick Bateman Leonardo DiCaprio no matter what the original novel's author, Brett Easton Ellis, says, Mary Harron directed American Psycho to perfection, and Christian Bale is the definitive Patrick Bateman, his performance perfectly capturing the absurdity, banality, and inherent comedy of the yuppie lifestyle. Who, then, would have been the worst person to play Bateman? Surely Hollywood heartthrob Leonardo DiCaprio, whose blonde hair, blue eyes, and baby face were, in the late 90s, the stuff of fawning legend. Of course, we've seen DiCaprio do Menace before, but pre-Gangs of New York and pre-The Departed, this was still a Leo in his infancy. But the studio wanted what the studio wanted. DiCaprio was cast, and Harren's disagreement with the move got her kicked off the project. Everyone's favorite JFK obsessive Oliver Stone stepped in to replace her, but a tumultuous pre-production process with significant creative differences springing up between Stone and DiCaprio meant the whole thing broke down before it had really got going. Once the project had all but blown up in their faces, Harren and Bale returned, ever the underdogs, and we got American Psycho as it was always meant to be. Number 6. Aragorn, Stuart Townsend Left behind somewhere in the early noughties, after delivering formidable parts in the deeply flawed League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and Queen of the Damned, Irish actor Stuart Townsend's career could have been quite different. He was, after all, the original casting for Aragorn in Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy, and would have gotten away with it too, except Jackson decided at the 11th hour that things weren't going the way he wanted. After training and rehearsing with the other cast members for two months, Townsend was ditched on the very day before filming began, with Jackson claiming he needed someone older for the part. To add insult to injury, the production then refused to pay Townsend for his time because he had hadn't worked on it long enough. Viggo Mortensen stepped in to replace Townsend and ensured the stability of the trilogy, guiding it alongside Ian McKellen and Elijah Wood as the film's triad of dependable leads. It also launched the Dane as an international talent, paving the way for his many collaborations with David Cronenberg and the career and plaudits that followed. Number 5. Axel Foley, Sylvester Stallone while many of the other recastings on this list are at least plausible, if not preferable, it seems nigh impossible for anyone but comedy legend Eddie Murphy to have played Beverly Hills Cop's Axel Foley, and doubly impossible that the alternative casting would have been Sylvester Stallone. But Stallone was in fact on board to play the part of the fast-talking, street-smart Detroit cop who becomes a fish out of water on the streets of LA. On paper, this kind of makes sense, as Sly has played born enforcers on both sides of the thin blue line before and even after. And yet, given there was always supposed to be a prominent vein of humor throughout the film, Stallone's violence-heavy Beverly Hills Cop would have robbed us of one of the great action comedies of the 1980s. The role, of course, turned Murphy into a superstar following early career hits in 48 Hours and Trading Places, while Stallone continued on his muscle man trajectory, going on to work the few parts of his Beverly Hills idea that he had ownership over into 1986 Action of Cobra, which is a gloriously deranged action film you owe it to yourself to see. It's great. Number 4. Indiana Jones, Tom Selleck. The whip, the hat, the quip, the Harrison Ford. These are the core elements of Steven Spielberg and George Lucas's Indiana Jones. But back in the days before Raiders of the Lost Ark, when Indy was merely another adventurer in the mold of Alan Quatermain, most of these elements were up for grabs, not least the lead role. Cast as Indy before Ford ever showed his face, Tom Selleck, presumably mustache and all, was set to don the fedora and journey to parts unknown. Unfortunately for him, the Blue Blood star was caught in a bind when CBS wouldn't let him any wiggle room in his contract for Magnum P.I., 
the role that made him the force of the TV world that he is today, and the man with the magnificent facial hair had to bail on Spielberg Lucas and the role of a lifetime. While it may have been an opportunity that was sorely missed for Selleck, who has never starred in anything remotely as big as Indiana Jones on the silver screen, it is something of a fortunate break for the rest of us. While Selleck would have probably done a great job, there is simply no comparison to the inimitable dry humor and morose physicality that Ford brings to all of his parts. Selleck would have made a bankable movie. Ford made a legend. Number three, The Terminator. Lance Henriksen. Arnold Schwarzenegger's physical presence, accent, and ability to seem wooden and robotic may have made James Cameron's T-800 Terminator nightmare fuel for 1980 cinema goers, but this wasn't how the director originally saw things playing out. Cameron initially wanted something of an average Joe who could blend into his environment when penning the original Terminator script, and had Lance Henriksen, whom he had worked with on Piranha 2, in mind. Early concept art shows Henriksen in the park, presenting a much more gaunt and quietly sinister figure for the T-800. But producers stepped in and vetoed Cameron's choice, leaving him to turn to an eager Schwarzenegger, who had been initially put forward for the role of hero Kyle Reese, but really wanted to play the villain. Henriksen didn't totally miss out though, as he wound up playing Detective Vukovic in the movie, one of the police officers who tracks down heroine Sarah Connor and interrogates Reese. Cameron also got his wish in the end, casting Henriksen as the android bishop in Aliens, his horror-turned action thriller sequel to Ridley Scott's original space nightmare. Number two, Dirty Harry. Frank Sinatra. Dirty Harry Callahan is an essential part of the Clint Eastwood mythos, marking his distinctive middle period between Spaghetti Westerns, The Dollars Trilogy, and his work behind the camera in movies like The Outlaw Jesse James and Unforgiven, cementing the capital B badass status Eastwood enjoys in the Hollywood canon. Nevertheless, the part of the rough and ready maverick cop almost went to someone far more unlikely. Yep, that's right, old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra, was first up for the part, which the studio had offered around to pretty much any big name working at the time with no takers. Producers struggled to get any interest in the role until they got in touch with Sinatra, who took the part with a 12-gauge shotgun as his weapon of choice. However, after sustaining a broken hand while filming The Manchurian Candidate, he was unable to hold a gun, never mind a 12-gauge, and walked away from the film, and the part of Dirty Harry for good. Given his polished, mobster-like sheen, Sinatra could never really have been right for the part, and if he had stayed on, chances are Don Siegel's original 1971 movie wouldn't have spawned any sequels. And number one, Snake Plissken, Charles Bronson. Among the many things we have John Carpenter to thank for is the fact that he helped Kurt Russell shed the Disney star image and flourish as an action lead. And the movie that started that was 1981's Escape from New York, where Russell was given one of his most iconic ever roles, Snake Plissken. But Russell didn't always stand a good chance of getting the role. In fact, when Carpenter was moving ahead with the project, production company Avco Embassy Pictures had pushed for Charles Bronson in the part instead. Carpenter himself was reluctant to work with Bronson, though, saying that he was, quote, afraid of working with him due to it still being early in his career. And you have to say that it was a good thing that that didn't happen, as Russell's Eastwood-esque approach to the character of Snake is a large part of what made him so iconic. It's just hard to think of someone like Bronson imbuing that same energy, and especially not if it meant depriving us of the long-running partnership Russell and Carpenter cemented with Escape from New York. 